It's, it's not something to do. The church has to prepare itself. That's yes. why we, there is no more time left. We are really, really close to the coming of the Lord. As wow. we say that Jesus, he is the husband and, and the church is the wife. You know that God has prepared the rings. Mm. You know, when someone is about to get married, it is, it is the wife who has to take it off of the garment. Yes. And the Lord has find the rings, but it is the church who has to prepare herself to, to, to make sure that the gown is white. How do we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? We prepare ourselves only through the life of holiness. Okay. The church have to come back to repentance and live holy. Because the Bible say, be holy, because he that have called us is holy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. What, what do you say to the people who, who say, I have given my life to Jesus, so that takes care of, that takes care of everything. That takes care of all my sins, all the sins that I will ever, ever make in, in, in the future, all the sins that I've made in the past. As long as uh, I have given my life to Jesus, I believe that I will have eternal life. As one pastor said, he called it eternal life insurance. People think as soon as they give their life to the Lord, that's it. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, start living for him or giving things up for him or, or consecrating yourself. What do you say to the Christian who says, listen, all, the, all I have to do is simply accept him in my life and then I can go on living however I want to live? Uh, I will say that is, that, is, that is a false gospel mm -hmm. because that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ because uh, that is one thing, uh, receiving Christ in your life and that is one thing about persevering to keep your salvation. Wow. You know, the Bible talks yes. about uh, uh, working out on your salvation with trembling. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's not just uh, today I wake up and I accept Jesus in my life and it takes care of the business. We have to live as Christ lived. The Bible says that we have to walk in the apprentice, in the footstep of Christ Jesus. That's right. Sometimes I feel um, not condemning the body of Christ, but there are a lot of ministers and pastors who, who don't want to discuss the idea of holiness or the message of holiness because they are concerned with filling their churches or they're concerned with making people feel uncomfortable. They're concerned that people might leave. But I, one thing I've noticed about you is uh, you would rather preach what is written and have everybody leave. You have said this before, if it's just you and your wife in the church, so <laughs> be it. But you would rather keep the word that is written in here and proclaim it to the nations whether people want to hear it or not. So to the ministers that are listening here today, we must not be afraid to preach what's written in the Word of God. Yes. What is written is written. And we would, ra it's far better for us to preach what's written in the Word than bring people to God, bring people to the cross, than to preach a watered down gospel that says you can live however you want to live and Christ will take care of all the business. The, the one thing is that we, as ministers, we cannot forget is this. The Bible says that we shall give an account. Yes. We shall give an account. So. Uh, we have to say what the Lord have to say. The Bible says that we watch over their soul and we will give an account for everything that we are doing. The problem in the church, Pastor Joan, that is the problem that we have today in the church. Mm. The mandate Jesus left for the church was in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. The Bible says, go to all the nation and make them my disciples. Jesus was not concerned of making them my church, your church members, wow, or just good. making them just believers. That's but good. the mandate yeah. of Christ was that we will make disciples. Mm -hmm. We have to make the, today pastors, we are too worried of, of making members, filling our churches. And, and that's why you will go in the church, you will see people be in the church for seven years and they just come to church and they sit down. That is not the mandate of the church. Time is running out. People are dying yes. and people are going to hell. Yes. The church have to stand up. Mm -hmm. The time is over. Mm -hmm. It's not more uh, only about building big churches or having a lot of members in the church, but we have to make disciples. And that's why we have a problem today in the body of Christ, because we are too much concerned about church members rather than following the mandate of Christ, making disciples in our church. Mm -hmm. I gave them three years. 
you come under ministry, we, you, you learn three years, you have to be able to go out and do something for Jesus. Yes. You cannot just sit in the church and, and just be there your whole life. You have to do something. That's good. So you, have a, you require things out of the members of your church. The Lord required us for every believer That's that we should go and make disciples. Wow. Excellent. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. There's only one message left here, ladies and gentlemen. The, the Lord said, it is the message of repentance. Every other gospel has been preached. Every other message has been preached. Now that we are in the end times, in the last season, we must begin to preach this message of repentance. I want to take this last few minutes because I don't want to, to miss this opportunity to talk about Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I were able, the Lord opened a door for both of us this past August to go into Haiti. Yes. Um, and of course, we all know about the tragedy that has taken place in Haiti um, and the people that are in need of, of finances, but most importantly, they are in need of prayer. Um, tell us about how God moved, because I have to say, we really saw the power of God in Haiti. We yes. saw the miracle working power of God and proved to the Haiti, Haitian people, well, God proved to the Haitian people that he is still alive. Yes. Talk to us about what some of the things that we saw. The Lord just confirmed his word. Yes. The Bible say that he was working with the apostles yes. and he was confirming the word. Mm -hmm. and, and as we went down to Haiti, we brought to the nation of Haiti the same message, which was the message, message. of repentance. Okay. And the people of Haiti respond to the message of repentance as we saw people coming to the altar. The first night we had about uh, four or 500 people who came to give their life to Christ, abandoning voodoo, witchcraft, bring it on the altar. And in response of that, mm -hmm. the Lord began to answer on the needs of their people as we saw uh, physical healings and, and the power of God uh, before our eyes we saw people coming out of wheelchair uh, the blind seen and we give Jesus all the glory because the gospel is real talk to, uh, there's one story that stands out of a healing when we were in Haiti that young boy who was deaf and mute since birth tell us a little bit about that that wonderful story of how Jesus was able to heal him Jesus be all the glory yes. that the young the young boy as the father was given a testimony since he was born until the age of Mm -hmm. He could not speak, he could not hear, but as we were in the presence of the Lord, yes. after the people uh, came to repentance and we entered into worship, the mighty presence of the Lord came Hallelujah. on the sanctuary yes. and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm touch this young boy and the young man, the young boy began to say Jesus he began to speak that is something that astonished everybody because he could not hear right. and he could not speak so he didn't learn Haitian because he couldn't hear before right. but by the power of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. he began to speak Creole and to Jesus be all the glory to Jesus be all the glory Praise and God. what's so important is not only was there miracles because there were so many miracles that we couldn't even count mm -hmm. uh, people uh, there was a, a young man who was blind at night and the Lord opened his eyes. Yes. Uh, there was a woman who had severe pain in her back and she felt a hand on her back and, and she was healed. But what is important, and this ties in with your messages, before those miracles took place, we preached on repentance. Yes. Because Haiti, as we all know, is a nation that, that is very bound in witchcraft and, and voodoo and in the demonic. But when the people began to repent, when the people began to give their lives to Jesus, mm -hmm. when the people began to confess their sins, yes. it opened a door for the miraculous. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, because the, the Bible say that if my people who are called by my name, mm -hmm. if, if they will humble themselves and pray, not just pray, but the Bible say if they will turn mm -hmm. from their wicked ways yes. and 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 the bible jesus promised or something he said that he will heal the land mm -hmm. so we see that repentance bring 